When painting, you find the subtlety of a painting comes through using good brush technique. Same goes for voiceover. You need to learn good mic technique to bring out the subtleties in your voice. So let's talk about microphone technique. And first we need to talk about the two different types of microphones. The type we usually use, our basic condenser microphone, and then there's the dynamic microphone. So let's look at the different types of delivery we use for those. This, of course, is a dynamic mic. The way it works, really, is you have to talk very close to it. It's a, a vocal mic. The problem is, is that, remember, you're not talking half an inch from somebody's eardrum. You want to be heard the way people normally hear you. This is not designed for voiceover. And this is our good friend, Mr. Studio Condenser Mic. It's the mainstay of our industry, so this is really what you need to learn how to use. Couple of quick tips. One, never talk directly into the diaphragm, which is the round thing inside there. Make sure you're talking into the right side of it. Usually, the logo side is where the right side, and that's where the uh, pickup pattern is. These are usually cardioid mics, and we'll explain that in a minute. But you want to be have that diaphragm at about eye level. So you're looking right. You can see the diaphragm, but you're not talking into it. So you're talking down here. Best to have it hung upside down. You should be at least five to seven inches away because this is the way people hear you. That's the way a microphone is supposed to be. You look at a lot of pictures of the big stars in Hollywood using condenser microphones. They're not right in front of them. And that's the proper way to use this. If you use it properly, you don't even need a pop screen. Pickup patterns. Okay, this is a one-sided mic. You can't really talk into the other side of it. I mean, what happens is, is if you talk to the back side of it, it's amazing how many people do this, too. It doesn't sound quite the same. People call and say, it's all muffled. Turn the mic around. Talk into the right side of it. But there is what's called a cardioid pattern, like this, from both sides of these things here. And you can talk directly into it, but as you move a little bit off axis, you can hear that it changes the tone. This is me talking from the side of it, and we come back to the front, and then we go back to the other side, and then we talk in the back again. And, of course, you can hear what happens. You want to be able to address it pretty much you know, straight on. Sometimes people talk about talking off axis, but really, as long as you're angled toward the mic uh, within this wide pattern here, you should be okay. Proximity effect. Some people use this to try and sound a little bit deeper voice than they really are. The physics are kind of hard to explain. It has to do with bass frequencies and how they travel through the air. But essentially, the closer you get to a mic, the more easily it will pick up pick up bass tones. So as you hear, as I get closer to the mic, I haven't changed my volume at all, uh, but you'll notice that my voice is a lot deeper, and as I back off, talking the exact same way, it no longer is as bassy. You can use that for certain effects if you need to, or if you're talking very quietly, but proximity effect is not something you really want to use in your general voice acting type of read, and certainly not if you're doing audiobooks. All right, let's talk about the relative volumes of different types of reads. For example, if you're going to do a car ad or something, you really don't want to have to adjust your level. You don't want to be riding gain on it, as we used to say in the radio business. You want to set it and forget it. So, for example, if you're going to do a loud read, you don't talk directly into the microphone. You back off. So if you're doing a car ad, like, say, come on down to Dan George or Mitsubishi. We'll be there. You know, that sort of thing. That you, you don't overmodulate if you back off. You learn eventually what the what the right distance is, but you know you don't have to really play with your levels all that much. If you're doing an audiobook, that's when you do the standard distance, and you have your book here or your script right underneath here, and you just read normally and the way you would hear someone reading a book to you, and that's pretty simple. But you don't want to be playing around with your levels while you're recording, and if you're watching the waveform while you're recording. You're not paying attention to the script, so that might be something you want to think about. So the best thing to do as far as controlling volume is concerned is learn how much your voice is picked up 
the more you back away and the more you get closer to the mic, but not too close. Although if you're going to whisper, don't get too close because this mic will still pick it up really nice. That's the great thing about a condenser mic. So mic technique has to do with all those things I just mentioned. The pickup pattern, the proximity to the mic, making sure your levels are set right in the first place, and then just forget about your microphone. And like the artiste and his paintbrush, learn to use the proper technique, and you too will paint some very pretty pictures with your voice. And that's my tip of the week.